Hello everyone and welcome back to SIG Blender. Last time we covered the basics of modeling, um, how to take an object and uh, give it form and shape to make it seem like something in the real world. And now from this tutorial onwards, we're going to be working towards one big scene. So we're going to be modeling different props and different objects and different um, things to put into this one render we're going to be working towards. Uh, I don't know when you're watching this, but um, like I said in the first one, it's been a very rainy, rainy summer. So I'm in a sort of rainy mood, so I think I want to make a, a, a rain-themed render. Uh, normally when I do renders, I either find a, a start picture, like a picture to base it off, so I know how to do the um, what each object's going to be and where it's going to be, or I choose one main prop to put in the middle of the scene. With this render, I think I want to have a prop in the middle. I think it's going to be a person with an umbrella. So to start off uh, our modeling careers, I think a person's a little too hard for now, although we will get to that later and we will rig them up so they move around and everything. But for now, I think this tutorial will just be a little, a nice little umbrella. So the first step to modeling anything is choosing which base object, which base mesh you want. Uh, I don't think a cube is really good because a umbrella has a very cylindrical middle bit and that's what I think I'm going to be starting with. So let's go ahead and delete this cube and we'll create a cylinder in its place. So uh, whenever you create an object you also should decide um, how detailed you want it to be. 32 vertices I think is a bit excessive um, for what we are going to be wanting modeling. I think 8 is a fine amount. Uh, 8 to 12 or 6 to 12 vertices is usually what I go for when modeling an object. Uh, it's starting with the cylinder. It usually has enough detail to go wherever you want. So we'll jump right into it. Get right into edit mode. So the first, the first thing we probably should do is um, since this cylinder is going to be the um, pole of the umbrella, it's definitely going to have to be a lot, a lot longer. So we're going to scale the Z, bring that on up. We're going to have to also make it a lot thinner. So I'm going to scale everything but the Z to make it nice and thin. So now you can see we have this nice, long, thin pole. Okay. So uh, the next thing I think we should model, uh, next part of this umbrella would be obviously the umbrella bit. So uh, well, like a very useful tool we mentioned in the last video is loop cuts, which I was just kind of giving a little demonstration of before. The hotkey is control R and then hover over one of these lines and you see this purple middle line down here. Click to confirm you want one loop cut. Then you have this loop cut you can drag up and down. We'll put it right way up here. Boom. So now, the, in terms of faces, we have this one really long face making up most of the pole. And then these other faces right over here for the top bit. So these faces I'm going to extrude out. And then this will be the actual covering rain part of the umbrella, the cloth part. So uh, in order to select all of these faces, uh, we're going to use Z to go into wireframe mode. That's another another useful hotkey to add to the list is Z. I don't know if we added it yet. We might have already added it. And then uh, B is box select. So when we hit B, we can make a box and it'll select whatever is in that box. So we want to select these top faces. So we're going to hit B and do that and then you can see we selected it all I'm just gonna do it again without wireframe to show you what would happen if I didn't have wireframe on when I did that and I selected everything then the ones that were being covered by the faces weren't selected so that's why wireframe is useful because you can select through the faces to get everything else so make sure that the um, the top face isn't selected you can hit shift right click for that and so we're gonna extrude these out to make a face so if we extrude region, it's not exactly what we want. Um, that extrudes 
basically making a copy. Uh, individual faces also wouldn't be one we want because then it's not connected. So uh, vertex normal is what we're going to go with. So now we have, as you can see, this nice start to an umbrella. I'm just going to move it down a bit because the start of the umbrella does move down a bit. Kind of starts at a curve. And I'm also going to scale the Z of these faces that we have selected now so that the, the actual thing is a much thinner because as an umbrella is very thin, obviously. It's just one little thing of cloth. All right. So we're going to do that again, I think. Looks like it's, it's right to do it again. So we'll bring it out, move it down. And I think we should do three in total, is, is what I'm thinking. So one more, out and down. Sweet. Look at this. So, uh, I'm just gonna move this top face up a bit. Let's see. Next step, uh, I think we should do is we're gonna want to probably uh, work with some symmetry here. Uh, one of the great things of modeling that I think I mentioned in the last tutorial is that you can work with symmetry really well to make your work a lot easier. So what my end goal for this next step is, is I want to uh, make it so that you know how an umbrella will do something like something like this where like it's coming down a bit. I'm just going to do this for an example. You don't have to do this if you're following along. It'll come down a bit so that it's like bending in. Umbrellas usually do that. But I don't want to have to do it for each each side of this like eight-sided umbrella, right? That would be a lot of work. So we can work with the symmetry and the mirror modifier to make this, this whole process a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this top face. And I'm going to delete this bottom face. All right. And then I'm going to hit Control-Alt-Q. That splits our screen in the top, front, and right ortho. I'm going to hit Z, like I said before, to uh, change it into wire frame mode. And then I'm going to hit B, like I also said before, to select for box. And so we're going to want to cut it into an X and Y mirror. So we're going to cut the left side, and we're going to cut I'm not sure what side this is, but this side as well. So since this can be mirrored around four ways, I guess, yeah, four ways, we don't really need these other four right now. So delete them with D, and now we got this nice cut in. Then we go add modifier, mirror, X and Y, and there we go. Now instead of having to mess with each part of the umbrella eight times, we can now just do it a simple two times. So, like I was saying before, umbrellas don't really have this this flatness to it. It usually bends down in the middle. So I'm going to hit Control R to do the loop cut. Uh, I want to do the loop cut twice, so I'm going to scroll up one so the number of cuts becomes two. Click and click. I'm going to do that for this one too. All right. So we want to move these down. So I'm going to select all of these. It's not really a easy way to do it. Just kind of shift right clicking. So shift right click, right click. Be sure to get this one and this one, all of these two. So we're going to want to move these down slightly. So GZ, very, very slightly. You see when this, this happens, it's that the the face below it is getting higher than the face above it, which we most certainly do not want. So I'm going to move it down just enough so that it doesn't do that. Alright, and then for the final bit, at the very top of this umbrella, this isn't what normally umbrellas do, they don't really have this weird bend at the top. So we want to flatten out all of these points. So I'm going to select all the points. And then I'm going to scale their Z to be 0. Now flatten them out. 
That's a very, very useful trick if you ever need to flatten anything out. Um, scaling the Z to be zero or scaling whatever axis to be zero uh, will flatten them all to the same, same point of that axis. All right. So this umbrella is looking pretty good so far. Uh, there's just a couple more things I want to do. I'm going to hit E. Well, first I'm going to hit clipping down <clears throat> Sorry, at the mirror modifier. What this is going to do is that when I hit EX, it's going to hit the wall of the mirror. If I don't have clipping on, it doesn't hit that wall. So clipping hits the wall. And now we can remake this face that we had before over here. If I select all of them and hit F, we have this face again. Uh, why I want to do this is because uh, normally at the top of an umbrella, there's that little thing pointing out. I don't know what it's called, but you know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to hit K to use knife. I'm going to want to cut this mirror a bit uh, to make that, make that thing to stick out. So K. Okay. Control to select the midpoint. Click here. Click the next midpoint. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Bonk. Bonk. There we go. We'll extrude this. You can see it mirrors it in all four sides, so it's a nice square. I think we can scale it down a bit. Usually they're a lot thinner than the rest of the rest of the umbrella. So we're not, we don't want to scale the Z, we just want to scale the X and Y. So scale, shift to Z, bring it down, bring it up, and we're looking good. So the umbrella looks pretty good so far. For the very last step, I think I'm just going to want to make one handle at the bottom, which then that will just be another simple uh, loop cut. Control R, click, bring it on down. I actually can't see it from this angle, so I'm gonna scroll out a bit. That seems to be an appropriate size for a uh, a handle. Scale Z zero to make our loop cut straight. I'm gonna hit Z to go wireframe. Select all of these faces that I made, and then again extrude the vertex normals. And there you go, there's your handle. So this was a really simple model um, to make an umbrella. It's a nice start. Uh, you can see how some of the techniques we uh, learned about in the last tutorial are coming into use to make this object. Uh, in the next tutorial I'll be moving on to more complicated objects uh, using the same principles that we've been using in this and last tutorial. Yeah, I hope you, I hope you stay tuned. I'll see you in the next